All right, KW Milwaukee. It's a beautiful day in Milwaukee on October 29th. Let's rock and roll. Uh, I'm coming at you live down from the south side, down in Oak Creek, because I had an obligation this morning, and I had tight timelines to get back into any one of our offices. So uh, I'm remoting in like a lot of you do on a Tuesday morning via Zoom, and uh, I'm excited about this morning's because uh, as I've challenged the group this year in 2025, uh, one of the ways that I've um, done so is through my words of impact or words of, you know, words of the year, phrase of the year. And um, one of the things that I've been really, really focused on in 2025 is how I, we, us make an impact and how do we make an impact on those that we serve? How do we make an impact that those entrust in us with their largest financial assets? How do we make an impact on our families, our spouses, our partners, our kids? How do we make an impact in our communities, our churches, our places of worship? How do you make an impact? What does that look like? How do we do it? And how do you do so that the place that you love and care for and how we all earn our incomes is left better than the way that we found it when we came into it? And it's something I challenge you with as we think about how you make an impact in 2025, what that looks like, how you do it. And uh, I'm excited to talk about that today. So it's very much in line with what our mission statement is. It's to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and the legacies worth leaving. And as we build an incredible opportunity that this uh, um, that this industry provides all of us is how do we build legacies that are worth leaving and how do we make impacts within our communities? And the challenge I'd give you is this. I grew up in a household that very much believed in phrases, um, uh, believed in this phrase. We were challenged as such. We were provided opportunities to learn and grow and to whom much is given, much is expected. You know, uh, looking back on it in 2025, um, we've been incredibly fortunate to pay out around 44 million in commissions and roughly around $700,000 in profit share. And I go back to this phrase of to whom much is given, much is expected. And as we think about how we make impacts within our communities and what we're tasked with and how we do that, uh, several years ago, and I got to give a shout out to Ginger Wazovic for putting us on our radars, is she said, Charlie, you know, the Keller Williams platform is, has gotten so large and so great and the, and the scale in which that you guys give back within the communities is has been tremendous. Um, how do you how do we do that in a way that streamlines it to make broad impacts within our communities? And she challenged me and said, we have an incredible opportunity to make such an impact and that impact can go so far. Have you thought about a United Way campaign? And the United Way campaign is an incredible organization we're going to touch on a little bit this morning. Uh, last year, we ran a great campaign that we were super proud of and the impact that we were able to make within the United Way campaign. But just to give you a little bit around it, the mission statement of the United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha counties is changing lives and improves our communities by mobilizing people and resources to drive strategic impact in health, education, and financial stability. And so again, to whom much is given, much is expected. And you might be asking, okay, so what is it that they do? And what's interesting about the United Way is they have 1,500 corporate partners with 50,000 donors and 220 local programs that all fight together to create lasting change to make a united world. And how do we live by that? And how do we make an impact? Because we are provided so much from the communities where we all live, work, and play by what it is that we do, by tr creating our fiduciary responsibilities to our clients in southeastern Wisconsin. The impact in the four county area is this. Quite frankly, the majority of those they serve are under the age of 34. 65% are females, 47% um, African American, 43% Caucasian, 14% Hispanic. And from an income standpoint, over 50% of those they serve make less than $50,000 a year, all of which are impacts in local nonprofits in our southeastern Wisconsin communities. And as we were built, continuing to build out KW Milwaukee, and you know that we love making an impact within our communities philanthropically and teaching um, that philanthropic ways comes in three forms. It's your time, it's your talent, and it's your treasure. And the United Way is a way that allows us to united live and create scale to making change and impact. So with that, we're kicking off our 2024 United Way campaign. So with that, check this out. They are face-to-face 
with the possibility of losing their home. The unexpected bills keep coming and the savings keep disappearing. Today, their world seems impossible to manage. She is in a moment of panic in the parking lot, struggling to catch her breath as she enters the building. She feels the eyes of everyone on her. Today, her world seems impossible to manage. He is spending most of today searching and dreaming and holding on to hope. Tomorrow will be another chance to battle the barriers of finding a good job. Today, his world seems impossible to manage. They know that every day that passes without a computer in their home is a day he falls one step further behind. It's more than hardware and software. It's his future. Today and every day, their world seems impossible to manage. For many in our community, the everyday challenges of life are overwhelming. Their worlds, indeed, seem impossible to manage. In a time of need, everyone should have someone they can turn to for help. Together, we can be that help. We can't rely on small solutions to big problems. One single group or organization can't solve these issues alone. We know that when we work together, we can make a difference. And United Way is ready to lead the way. Each year, thousands of corporate partners, donors, volunteers, and local nonprofits all work together to create a strong community. This is about neighbors looking out for neighbors. It's about ending family homelessness. It's about changing the lives of high school students by focusing on mental wellness support and services. It's about reducing the barriers that prevent someone from finding a good job. And it's about creating opportunities for individuals and families by bridging the digital divide. We know that change doesn't happen alone. It takes all of us working as one, united, to create and sustain a strong community. Together, we are connecting people to possibilities. When you give to United Way, you are funding programs that support tens of thousands of people in need throughout our community. When you give to United Way, you are joining donors, volunteers, and advocates, all ready to raise their hands and tackle our community's biggest challenges. When you give to United Way, you're not just making a donation, you're changing lives. Join us today in supporting the 2024 United Way campaign. And with that, I'm incredibly thankful and honored to introduce to you guys uh, to help us kick off our United Way campaign in 2024 to someone I've known for quite a while and worked on her on a variety of different philanthropic initiatives in southeastern Wisconsin and a resident of Whitefish Bay, Julie Anthony and Annie Hernandez. Julie and Annie, uh, thanks for jumping on the call this morning and tell us a little bit about the impact the United Way has and why it's important to our communities where we all live, work and play. Yeah, you bet. So wait a minute. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Julie Anthony, as Charlie said, and it's my honor to be your United Way campaign coordinator sponsored by Johnson Controls. Uh, I appreciate you adding us to your busy agenda because I know you all have a lot of good work to do. Um, and thank you to all who have supported United Way in the past. I wanna give a special shout out to Ginger, your rock star, very energetic uh, United Way ambassador who is leading your campaign again this year. Ginger, thank you for your continued to champion our mission and inspire others to join you as well as demonstrated by the amazing committee of ambassadors you have rallied around you this year. So that's just awesome. And Charlie, thank you to you as well. As you mentioned, we've worked together on a number of projects in our community. So I admire your continued desire to improve our community and your generosity. As you heard in the video, United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha County has always had one simple purpose, to help people live better lives. And we are all about solving big problems with big solutions. I wanna share just some of the uh, accomplishments we had last year. Over 3,700 people were served by our Reducing Barriers to Employment and Advancement programs. 
1,800 high school students were part of our Teen Mental Wellness Empowering Minds pilot at two local high schools. Over 1,500 computers were distributed through our Tequity Initiative, and more than 13,000 people were served by safe and stable homes. We're really proud of these accomplishments, but there is so much more work to do. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about our Safe and Stable Homes Initiative, knowing how you can all appreciate the importance of owning a home. What comes to mind when you think about what homelessness looks like? For many of you, it's probably the image you have when you're sitting in your car and you see someone standing on the corner or at the median with a cardboard sign. Or it could be somebody outside of a convenience store or a gas station asking for change. What you probably don't think about is families who experience homelessness because we usually don't see it. Family homelessness is one of our community's largest unnoticed issues that we are facing. It is truly a hidden problem. United Way started making safe and stable home investments in 2020 to focus on programs and resources to both prevent and end family homelessness. To measure success, we use the definition set out by the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, which has 58 criteria an organization must meet as a guide for ending family homelessness. And we're proud to say at the end of 2023, we ended family homelessness in two of our four counties, and we're increasing our efforts to meet those metrics in the remaining two counties. An end to family homelessness means that a comprehensive response is in place to ensure family homelessness is prevented whenever possible. And when it can't be prevented, it is rare, brief, and a one-time experience. Since we launched our Safe and Stable Homes initiatives, there are now about 20 programs that we fund to prevent homelessness, where previously there were about two. Prior to Safe and Stable Homes, an average of four families on any given night experienced unsheltered homelessness in both Milwaukee and Ozaki counties, and we're proud to say that has now been reduced to zero. And of all Milwaukee evictions filed, legal representation has jumped to nearly 25% where previously it was less than 3%. So we're really proud of that initiative, but there is still more work to do. In addition to our four key initiatives, we have our community fund, which combines donations, your donations with other donors to make one large pool of funds. So you don't have to decide one specific issue to support. United Way connects peoples to possibilities by funding programs at a variety of local nonprofits. In our impact report and on our website, you'll see a listing of all of the nonprofit agencies that we support, along with the areas of investment as they relate to health, education, and financial stability. So be sure to check that out. And it's not the size of any one gift that matters. It's the fact that we're all giving together that makes United Way a unique and powerful concept. Every donation matters. We have a really cool tool on our website, our impact calculator, that can show you exactly what your donation can do in the community. So feel free to check it out, and Willis will be sharing more about this throughout the campaign. We also have some exciting incentives that I wanted to share with you about through our Give and Win sweepstakes. For any new or increased donation of $25, $50, $75, or $100, you will automatically be entered in our Give and Win sweepstakes, and there's some really cool prizes. Among those, is a $12,000 uh, or two year lease towards the purchase of a new car. We have some cool brewer experiences, packer experiences, and some great getaway vacations. So be sure to check that out. The deadline to qualify for the, our given win sweepstakes is November 8th, which is the, in the middle of your campaign. So if you wanna be a part of that, be sure to pledge early. If you give online, those your donations will automatically enter you into the sweepstakes if you meet that criteria. And if you're pledging on paper, be sure to give it to your office ambassador so that they can get it to our office by next Friday, November 8th. United Way mobilizes people to action so that all can thrive. And together with your support, we are building a future where everyone everywhere can thrive. My ask of you today is to make a meaningful contribution to your United Way campaign. And the benefit to you will to be, help us to build a community, to improve our community where we all live, work and play. They say that it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to raise a community. So thank you again for helping us to all live united. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. 
Julie, I would just pick I would piggyback on your um the homelessness initiative. And um one of the challenges that we face in southeastern Wisconsin is many. And I've had this opportunity to have conversations with a variety of leaders in in our community of uh, how do you tackle so many of these big problems at once? And uh, for, I've been very fortunate to be an active participant with Axe Housing. And mm -hmm. one of the the key deductions that Axe made was when you provided stability in a, of housing to a family, the statistics related to health, related to education, and related to crime all significantly were decreased. And I use that as a way is a, a um, way to showcase to our team like. What we do is vitally important and how and so many of us want to make an impact within our communities. And the one and one of the ways that we can do that is through our participation in the United Way campaign. So thank you for helping us highlight that and the importance that um, housing plays within helping uh, achieve a greater community in southeastern Wisconsin. Yes, for sure. Awesome. Well, guys, last year we were uh, incredibly fortunate through the um, the associates uh, through KW Milwaukee Associates, where we raised just south of twenty one thousand dollars to the United Way campaign. It was effectively really the first <laughs> year of our campaign, and um, we've been incredibly fortunate of through people giving of their time, talent, and treasure uh, to our United Way campaign. It's a basically effectively a three-week campaign. This year, uh, I challenged the team of our champions within each location is, can we see a 25% increase? And a 25% increase in our goal this year is across our organization and our 700 associates is uh, is 25,000. And um, 25,000 goes a long way in helping support and build our communities. And what, I, what I've learned through um, growing up in a household that challenged us of to whom much is given much is expected is that whether you give ten dollars or a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars it's the act of giving and the impact it can make and uh you know another phrase i would challenge the group of is is the gift of the giver is the joy you get in return and it is so incredibly profound on the impact that you can make in our communities that we all live, work, and play in, and with this year's United Way campaign. Um, so uh, we are incredibly excited to um, to kick off this year's campaign with the United Way team, along with KWMKE. Ginger, with that being our champion and really bringing the forthright, uh, bringing this to the forthright, anything you would add to the team to make you know to kind of energize the troops around the United Way campaign? Um, this year, it's super exciting. We have ambassadors in every office. So at the North Shore office, myself, Willis, and Isabel are available to you if you have questions. Southwest, Michelle Mueller, Lake Country, you can go to Steph Conrad, and Wauwatosa, Caitlin McCoo. Um, so thank you to all of you who are helping. There's um, easy ways to donate the QR code. Willis is going to send out directions for the portal, but also paper donations. We can take paper donations and we can help you decide where to put those funds. If you're struggling, do you want to do one of the key initiatives? Do you want to just do the community fund or do you want to kind of get micro and pick exactly what, um, you know, subset that the United Way supports that your donations would go to, we can help you figure that out. So please consider us a resource. I'm so excited to have their feet on the ground and let's get to this 25,000. We can do it. Yeah. So to kick off this year's campaign, guys, um, we are going to be making a, an initial contribution on behalf of KW Milwaukee for $5,000. Uh, on top of that, uh, Megan and I will personally contribute $1,000 as a way to help us kick off our campaign. And um, I called my parents yesterday. They're going to also match the first thousand dollars donations as well to help us kickstart our campaign towards the $25,000 goal um, in helping us get there with a, to start us off with a $7,000 donation to the United Way campaign through KW Milwaukee. The other thing we've done is locally and internally, we've created a few donor raffle prizes. And we've created three tiers to try and engage the group around exciting things that you can give at a variety of different levels. 
first at the thousand dollar level, uh, we were able to secure some one on one coaching sessions with Jason Abrams. You give it a thousand dollars. If you give two thousand dollars, you get two chances. Three thousand dollars, you get three chances. Uh, we are also providing two uh, two different games for two courtside seats plus parking to a Bucks game at a mutually agreed upon date at the thousand dollar level. At the five hundred dollar level, we're going to raffle off a night at the Fister Hotel for the KW Holiday Party. Uh, as I know, many of you like to enjoy the uh, the evening on December 4th, Thursday, December 4th, we're giving away a hotel room. Uh, also at the $500 level, we're going to do a round of golf at Shaniqua Country Club. Uh, also at the $500 level, a round of golf at Milwaukee Country Club, uh, family reunion ticket or mega camp ticket, one airline ticket to Las Vegas and family reunion. And we're also going to be giving away a ticket to the 2025 Bowl. At the $100 level, we have a variety of ways in which that you can participate and have a chance to win as a way to encourage you to give back where we live. We're going to be doing Sendex gift certificates, Quick Trip gift certificates, because I know many of you are Quick Trip uh, advocates. Uh, when we have some incredible coaching so sessions with a variety of people, we have a $100 matching donation to a local charity of an agent's choice. Uh, and so we, what we tried to do is put together a plethora of prizes to try and engage the group to give at a variety of different levels in hopes that you will join us on this campaign in helping us achieve our goal of $25,000 for the United Way campaign. Um, with that, uh, the office within the most donations will also win a food truck lunch. So uh, we're going to make a little healthy and friendly competition internally. And uh, we're going to be looking at the level of engagement within each roster. And the roster that has the highest level engagement uh, will win a food truck lunch uh, that we will pay for and bring to the office. So we try to do things differently this year other than just raising money to help engage the group, to give you different things to think about, drive a little healthy conversation competition amongst the group. And uh, we look forward <laughs> to your participation in helping us achieve our $25,000 goal for the United Way campaign. Ginger, any final parting thoughts, Julie, Annie? I just, you know, I'm so excited to run this campaign again. I'm so thankful for the ambassadors. And how about to the brokerage for those amazing prizes? That's awesome. <laughs> The food truck lunch, I want to say that's not volume. It's the number of people who donate. So we're really looking to increase participation. We had 50 people donate last year. I don't see why we can't get to 100 plus. Let's do it. Yeah. 50 right. people out of 700 is who participated last year. And we would love to double that in order to help us achieve our goal in 2024 of 25,000. And again, I just, I would challenge the group. It, it's not the monetary amount that matters. It's the level of engagement that matters. And I would challenge you as to how we make an impact within our communities of all where we live, work and play. Awesome. Well, Julie, Annie, Ginger, thank you guys for helping us kick off our campaign that will run through Friday, November 19th, guys. Yep. And thank you. Uh, thank you again, Charlie, for your excitement and enthusiasm. And can I just take you on the road with me for all of my kickoffs? <laughs> you did an awesome yeah. job. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And I will share with you, um, Amy Linder, who is the CEO of the United Way, and I have gotten to know each other really well. And she's an incredible leader within our community. And we're thankful for her uh uh, everything that she's done for the United Way over the last seven campaigns. So awesome guys, be on the lookout for more information. Our uh, location champions will be on the lookout and helping you guys participate. And we appreciate your guys willing willingness to uh, help us make a difference in Southeastern Wisconsin in 2024. All right. With that, hand, we're flipping it over to a few office operations updates. Uh, reminder, the Entergage survey for top workplaces for 2025 has come out and it is running. It is completely anonymous. And make sure that you uh, take a peek at that email. Very simple email. Again, it's a completely anonymous survey. Helps us benchmark where we are versus our peers. Next up, a little bit of an appreciation and a farewell to one of our leadership team members who's been with us for the last four years in and around mainly the Heartland office out in Lake Country, but as well as supporting the greater good of the KWMKE ecosystem by running a lot of our events, is Britain will be moving on into a new role very shortly. Her last week with us is this week. Britain's been incredibly... Um, She's been an incredible asset to our organization and quite frankly, uh, has put up with a lot of stuff because working in a family business creates an interesting dynamic for a lot of people. And um, 
I'm not the easiest person to work for when you're family. Why? Because I hold people within our family to a higher standard. And Britt, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done to serve and support our associates out in the Heartland office and help us throw freaking incredible events. And I got to give you a big shout out because you were the one that took our Christmas parties to the next level and uh, you will be missed, but I know that you aren't going far away. And uh, you will be in and around our KW community, which you'll, I'm sure, will announce your next opportunity here uh, publicly shortly. So, Britt, thank you for the last four years. In that same regard, uh, we've been incredibly uh, grateful for the opportunity to uh, get into business with Courtney, Courtney Lucchese. Uh, Courtney is actually someone that um, I made a pass at two years ago to try and make a hire. Uh, Courtney is a former teacher. Uh, you guys know within our KW communities, I love former teachers. Uh, they're incredibly compassionate and empathetic people. When Courtney left teaching, uh, she tried her hand in sales with the smart board company, uh, traveling all over the Midwest, helping sell smart boards to schools. And uh Courtney is a very dear friend of Nikki Kunick and uh, Nikki and I got back together when Britt decided that she was moving in a new direction. And we said, all right, let's go get her. And uh, Courtney is an awesome person. We look forward to welcoming her in her first day within the KW MKE organization, specifically a serving the Lake Country Associates will be next week, Monday. So be on the lookout for Courtney's first day. And please, as you're in and around the KW Milwaukee environment, please welcome Courtney to the team. Also, I uh, just want to remind the group uh, from Lieutenant Steph that DSPS credential renewal notice is now live. Um, it is just opened up uh, in Friday uh, of last week. So you now, uh, that email was sent to all license holders on October 25th, and that we would kindly ask that you would please send a copy of your confirmation page once complete to Steph so that we can track and ensure that everyone renews their license by the end of 2024. Lastly, next week, Tuesday, I think it goes unsaid, is a, a rather big day in our uh, democracy, and uh, I would encourage everyone to vote. I learned four years ago by hosting a team meeting on election day was um, not well attended and it had lack of engagement. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to learn, take a note four years from now, don't host the team meeting on election day. Uh pay attention, get out and vote. It's our civic duty. And whoever you vote for, just remember, be respectful and love uh, people for uh, having differing viewpoints and opinions. I think differing viewpoints and opinions are healthy. And uh, so I just want to remind the group, no team meeting next week, Tuesday. All right. With that, I'm flipping it over to Lindsey Vranick so I can clap the lights back on. Vranick, it's off to you for tech and marketing. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so just a few housekeeping items today. Um, and I wanted to start out with a couple of tools that I hope everyone is aware of and hopefully utilizing because it's going to make your lives a lot easier. Um, so everybody, I'm sure at one point needs to combine PDFs and split PDF documents. And I just want to remind the group, or if you don't know already, that there are tools in order to do that. So first and foremost, if you ever need to combine PDF documents, let's say you need to send out an offer to purchase to a co-broke. Typically, I think we all enjoy having one PDF document when we receive those. So if you need to combine the offer to purchase, the uh, um, addendum A, all of those documents, you can do that within zip form. And you're just going to check off those boxes, um, selecting those documents, click on that save PDF button that you see in that on that transaction screen. And then you're able to then either save them to the transaction, download them, download them directly to your computer, and then boom, you've got that one PDF document that you can then email out to the Cobroke. So next screen, Charlie, it'll just show the the screen there, it's really nice too because you can re reorder those documents. Um, so you can click and drag um, the highlighted in blue documents that you see there on the screen. And then you have those options to then download that PDF. Um, and then on the other side of things, if you need to split a PDF, you can do that directly in command in the opportunity. So next screen going to show a couple of screenshots here as well. So when you're working under that documents tab, when you're submitting documents for compliance review, let's say, again, you receive an email from your co-broke, 
um, and everything's signed. You've got the offer to purchase, you've got a counter offer, and you need to upload those for compliance review within the opportunity. Um, but you don't want to upload them in a zip form and then split them there and then re-download it. You can just upload that one PDF document directly on the screen within the opportunity and split and attach that um, those PDFs. And so as you can see in the screenshot, you click those three dots to the right, click on split and attach PDF. And then the next screen um, is gonna show you how you're gonna split and attach those. And so you're going to select where you're attaching those PDF documents. Um, if they offer to purchase, I think it's um, 11 pages, you're gonna put in one to 11. Go ahead and rename it, and then you can attach more pages as well um, so that you can easily split those and attach them to the appropriate file placeholders within the command opportunity and then submit those for compliance review. So really, really simple, um, really beneficial tools that you can utilize on a daily basis anytime you need it. Um, all right. And so if you want to learn more about that, we actually um, talk about that and go through that um, during our monthly compliance and command zip form training, which is um, the next one's coming up this week, Thursday. So Steph and I were on Zoom talking all about opportunities and command and how to utilize zip form um, and really take advantage of a lot of those tools um, that you see there. All right. Um, my favorite topic. Um, so if you have not received this email or seen this or heard about this or anything, um, we all received an email over the weekend to update our command passwords. So it's probably a good thing. We've never been prompted to change our password and command the entire five, six years that it's been around. So it's probably a really good thing for us, even though I know a lot of us are stuck in, you know, utilizing our same passwords. But this is really important, um, especially when we wanna make sure that our accounts are secure. Um, so it's really important because your current command password is no longer going to work and that was effective on Saturday. Um, so if you haven't already, please make sure that you're clicking on the forgot password link when you go to the sign in screen for command. Um, those password reset emails should be coming through now. Um, so, Click on um, that link to uh, create your new password. Um, if you are not receiving it, make sure you're checking um, probably a personal email address. That is most likely your password recovery email that we have on file. Um, so you're going to receive that code to enter and create a new password. Um, the new passwords do have to be at least 12 characters long. Um, and it does include um, the criteria um, when you are resetting that password. Um, if you get locked out of your account, um, it does reset every 10 minutes. So don't think that you're locked out for like indefinitely. Um, so make sure that you're trying that again. Um, if anyone has issues, you can reach out to me. We'll troubleshoot it. We'll get you back in. Don't worry. We'll we'll figure it out. So um, just wanted to um, bring this up and, and let you all know that this is a legitimate email um, and that we all need to update our passwords. All right. And finally, I'm really excited. Next week, Tuesday, um, on election day, we are doing a free headshot day. So um, hopefully you're getting out, you're voting, and then stop by Stonehouse Collective in Shorewood to get a free headshot. Um, so from one to four, um, you can sign up. I think we only have nine spots left. So that QR code, if you want to sign up and get a free headshot, um, great opportunity to um, stop in a Stonehouse Collective. It's a really awesome story. Or um, maybe do some holiday shopping while you're there too. Get a free headshot, go out and vote, and then maybe do some holiday shopping. Um, jump on that really early. I know I always like to. Um, so that's all I got, you guys. Um, again, password recovery, um, creating new passwords. Reach out to me. We'll get it figured out if anyone has issues. So Awesome. Thanks, Linz. All right. With that, we're flipping it over to Sheriff Reed. Sheriff Reed, what do these guys need to understand around the pathway to professionalism? Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, the pathway to professionalism is different than our code of ethics. It is uh, a list of keeping us professional uh, instead of um, agents drifting all over the place and doing real estate the way they want to do it. So it's a guide to keep us all on the same page as far as professional uh, with 
presenting the properties, presenting to each other and, the, and to the public. So I have those up, if you could, I don't, I sent them in. Do you see him, Joni? You're up on the page. I don't see him. Huh. Here we go. You got it? Nope. Well, I'll help you out. It, okay. Here uh, we go. What, what go I want, yes, wanted to do, I mean, it's a list of about 50 uh, behaviors, 50 things that we <clears throat> should be incorporating into our roles. And um, a lot of them, I mean, Keller Williams is known for their integrity and graciousness. And I think I don't get very many complaints from the public or other brokers about uh, lapses of professionalism, but it is something that we all need to check off in our own heads. So when you do pull up the slides from today's meeting, hopefully they're there, challenge yourself on a checklist on each one of these things. Yes, I do this. Yes, I do this. Yes, I do this. Oh, maybe I need to do this better. One of the things that I think is the most important in Guide to Professionalism is communication. Um, it's a real juggernaut with me <clears throat> that we don't um, communicate. We don't answer our phones. Um, I try to answer phones all the time. Sometimes it has to go to voicemail or sometimes I'll receive a text. Um, but the communication is key. Responding quickly, responding right away. I don't like to get the calls from another agent saying, I, I haven't heard from her in you know three weeks. Um, keep this in mind. And most importantly, I think talking directly on the phone is the most important. Um, your inflection in a text can be misread, misled. And it's very important, especially when you're negotiating with the other uh, agent, that you talk directly on the phone that you skip the text, skip the email, and um, talk to them directly. And, and follow that up with your amendment, follow that up with your counteroffer, whatever. But um, you're losing way too much just trying to get through a transaction with texting, believe me. So take the slides from the meeting when you get them. It's a list of all of the pathways to professionalism and uh, check them off to yourself. Well, I would add in, Sheriff Reed, I think yeah. it's a great list. And if we look at it, it's respect for the public and great reminders around what it is to respect the public. Respect for property. What are the ways in which that we respect the property of those that we are being entrusted with to show and list? And lastly, how is it that we respect for our peers? And one of the commentaries that I would make is I think part of the reason where we are within our industry right now is a lack of understanding for these three things of respect for peers, respect for property, and respect for the public. And that as an industry, we all have a, a duty and a fiduciary to work on these topics collectively as a whole in order to elevate the standing and the level of perception of professionalism within our industry. And between Joan, myself, and the variety of others on our leadership team, you would be amazed at some of the stories that we have gotten over the years in terms of the lack of understanding of the respect for peers, respect for property, and and respect for the public. Uh, it, I think it it is so, it's interesting that we have to continuously remind it, but that's okay. I think it's healthy for us as we go about in the ways in which we do our business and elevating the level of professionalism. So Sheriff Reed, thanks for... Uh, always being the one of law and order. I want to add one thing that I think is uh, more current now. More and more homeowners have um, cameras, have microphones, have abilities to record what goes on in their house. And so keep that in mind for yourself uh, and your comments and uh, remind the buyers as you're walking them through that they may be listening. So... Um, and it's good technology, but it's out there. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Joni.
<laughs> All right, with that, we'll wrap it up with a little training and education. You can see here the October training calendar. As a reminder, tomorrow is Bold Day 3 with Amber Down at the War Memorial starting at 9 o'clock, as well as the Ops Mastermind at noon. November training calendar is out. Reminder, no team meeting next week on Election Day. And then we will continue Bold on the 6th, 13th, and 20th with graduation on the 20th and a, Maureen, a special Maureen and Friends happening on the 27th at 10 a.m. Opportunity Knox is coming on November 15th at the North Shore office. Interested in joining a team, understanding what teams look like, how to develop a value proposition, how to attract and retain great talent, or you are talent and looking to join a team because I firmly believe that there's a lot of talent in this industry that needs structure and accountability and leadership. And Opportunity Knox is a way for you to uh, collaborate and understand the various teams, models, and structures that we have within the KW ecosystem if that is something that you desire to build or are attracted to. So November 15th from 10 to noon. Next up, we're revamping and relaunching the Budget Mastermind hosted by both Stephanie Minnick and Scott Kloss. And I believe Stephanie is on the call today. Steph, what do these guys need to know around the revamped Budget Mastermind to help these guys understanding that the path is in their financial math? Awesome. Yes. Thanks for letting us talk today. Scott should be here too. Scott, are you with us? Yes, I am on the I am on the Zoom as well. Awesome. Yeah. So we are here to launch or really, Scott, maybe you introduce it because you've kind of brought this this topic like in the last year. You've been really focused on this and now we're kind of relaunching it for two groups. Yeah, the most exciting topic that we could possibly think of. It might be more exciting than compliance, but uh, it's it's 50-50. Uh, but it is very, very important to know your numbers. And I have actually been leading a mastermind for six years now with the budget model of the millionaire real estate agent. And super excited to partner with Stephanie in this to just add some more flair, some more excitement, and just a different approach to it. So we wanted to take a, a couple minutes to explain what uh, what this is, what to expect, and hopefully get your get your excitement to to want to participate. Yeah, we've got a couple slides. Charlie, is there a next slide? There it is. So, so this is this is the the sheet of paper or the visual that you should print off and put on your mirror and put above your bed and put in your put in your car but these are the four models of the millionaire real estate agent <clears throat> and if you if you really understand these models you can run a business to the level of profit that you desire uh the book is about how to net a million dollars but if you want to net 50 grand then you could just do 120th of the book and it is all math so I, we wanted to show this slide because the third model at the bottom is the budget model. But really, if you're running a business, and this isn't just real estate, this is any business, the first thing you you want to know and understand is how much money do you want to take home to your family? And what are the conversion rates? How many appointments do you need to be on? And if you it, that is the economic model. And the the amount of money you want to take home the questions that you ask yourself are a lot different. Then you look at the number of leads that you need to generate in the lead gen model. And the third question then is how much is this all going to cost me? Uh, and, and once you know that, do you need anyone to help you do this or can you do it on your own? So if you go to the next slide, the budget, oh yeah, you go ahead with this. Yeah. So the next slide, this is really appropriate timing because a lot of us are starting business planning. So this is the funnel through which we'll run business planning through. First, we have to figure out, okay, why are we doing this, right? What are the profit goals? What is our life by design? And then we go through the different models, like Scott said, economic, lead gen, what are the activities that I need to do to hit those appointment numbers and those sales? Then we figure out, okay, what's the budget that we need to run and what would our profit be after expenses and cost of sale? And then who do we need in our world in order to run this and fuel that business? So on the next slide, we're going to talk about why are agents not running profitable businesses? And really there's four reasons. And the first one is they're managing their business for production and not profit. 
in coaching, we see this a lot when agents have a goal, like for example, I want to sell $8 million in volume. That's a really vague number because $8 million for all buyer business is $192,000 if depending on what your commission rate is. And $8 million could also be like 288,000, again, depending on where your commissions are. So that's a swing of like 96,000. So that's a person who's running business based on production goals and not profit goals. The next reason an agent isn't running a profitable business, they're not creating or following a budget. So maybe they're chasing shiny objects. There's a little bit of a lifestyle creep when sales are great in spring and then we start to panic in the winter. The next one would be they're not reviewing a PL or balance sheet monthly. And that's where this mastermind is going to come in because we'll be meeting monthly to kind of review some of those numbers together. And then the last one is they're spending all of their profit rather than reinvesting some of that profit back into their business to then scale and grow at a higher level. And Smin, one of the biggest mistakes I see that agents make is exactly that is they aren't strategically thinking about investments because they they view every time they make a decision around how they spend a dollar as an expense. Mm -hmm. And so they aren't strategically tracking how they're maximizing the return on the investment and shifting the concept of it's not an expense, it's an investment. And so how do I strategically look at what I do with the income that I make and how do I do, where do I deploy that in order to future uh, build build my business for the future? Absolutely. And so together with this mastermind, we're going to be able to break down like what are your lead gen levers and what return are you getting on those? And maybe it makes more sense to stop one and pour more into another that is working for you and will get an even better return. So that's something that Scott and I will work with everyone who wants to participate. Love it. So this is the actual budget model. Uh, and another name for this is called the 30, 30, 40. And the reason why it's called the 30, 30, 40 is because if you look at the very far right column uh, under best practices, it says if you gross GCI is gross commission income, if you gross two and a half million, then the the model says you would spend, you would have 750,000 or 30% that would come out in a cost of sale. And that that just means it only comes out when you have a sale. And then you would have 750,000 or 30% come out as an expenses. Those happen regardless of if you sell a house and you net 40% or a million dollars. Now that is the, the math of the millionaire real estate agent. And what I love about this slide is KWRI over the last 40 years has analyzed 10, you know, th hundreds of thousands of P&Ls. And what, whatever your GCI goal is that you see in the columns on the left, you can have your own. These are the averages of what they have analyzed. So if you don't know what percentage or you know you don't have any idea, then this is what this in the next slide is about because the budget model has it for you. So let's just say your commission goal, the first, you know, that first question you ask is 340 grand. Well, instead of, you know, instead of 30%, it's actually 26% in that category. And then your, your expenses are a little more 122 grand or 36%. So you're, you're giving that average and we help guide you to make sure that you're putting the, the expenses and the cost of sales in the right bucket. You're not overspending in certain areas and underspending in certain areas. And then the next, the other side of the coin is your expenses. And I know this spreadsheet or this visual might be very overwhelming, and to me, as an agent, it I had no idea what any of this meant. If Charlie, you could close your ears. And if Marine's on, close your ears. But I had no idea what a chart of accounts was as an agent. I had to learn this when I took over running the market center. But this is, we all, we all run businesses. And so in this, you've got nine categories in Gary Keller accounting that you can spend your money on. And if you look at that 340 example again, it actually tells you the percentage of that 36% could go towards paying people, could go towards generating leads, could go towards education and coaching. And so we look at this and really what it what it is, is people will come on and they will share their last month's P&L. And they'll say, this is what I grossed, this is what cost of sales was, this is what I netted. And we all have a mastermind around it. So it's just a high level, real life applicable 
mastermind from your peers. Uh, no one is saying, hey, look at me, I'm great. And no one is saying, oh my gosh, I made tons of mistakes because we're all in this together and we can learn from both. Absolutely. So when we start, we'll, we have a date in November that we're going to kind of have an intro meeting on. And what I would encourage you to know is that we've got two groups. One is going to be a more beginner group. So if this is all very new to you, don't worry, there's a space for you. And if this is something that you've been working on for a little longer, or maybe you feel more confident in, we've got a spot for you too. So we're going to have a beginner and more advanced group. And so I would encourage you to reflect on these questions that we'll answer or that we'll ask you. So on a scale of one to five, let's say one is non-existent. I have no idea what you're talking about. Five is I could teach a class on this. How would you rate yourself on the next couple questions? So the first one would be, I have a net profit goal in both dollar amount and percentage to my GCI. The next one, I have a clear understanding of my current monthly income and expenses. Third is, I know the categories that would be classified under a cost of sale of my business. Fourth is, at least once per quarter, I review all my expenses and I determine where I can make financial cuts or adjustments. Five, I'm... I regularly track my net worth and set financial goals. So maybe this is a passive income goal that I'm working for or a net worth goal, or maybe I have a debt reduction plan. So what goal, what type of goals are you setting? I'm comfortable reading and analyzing a P&L statement, a profit and loss statement. I know the number of homes I must sell just to break even on my expenses. And then finally, this one I think will resonate with many. I work really hard and I know where every dollar of my income went at the end of the year or maybe at the end mm -hmm. of the month, right? How many of us have gotten that 1099 and you think, oh my gosh, where did this go? It's not in my account anymore. And if that's for you, if, if that's something that resonates with you, then this class is perfect for this mastermind. So Scott, yes. what are our next steps then for this? Yeah, I would say just add up those scores. You know, the max you can get is 40. So just think, you know, if if you have a lot of ones, twos, and threes and you're, you know, 20 or below, then this this beginner this beginner uh process might be really, really good for you. If you're if you're between 20 and 30, 35, like you're you're doing things really well. And if you're over 35, you're probably lying. <laughs> and so, you know, we we're doing the same mastermind on november 14th from one to two it's over zoom it doesn't matter if you're advanced or intro come to this one because we're going to explain this in much more detail and from that point you can decide oh my gosh this was this was a lot i'm exhausted i'm going to go the more uh intro route or hey I, i'm really grasping this i want to go to the advanced route yeah and this can sometimes be an overwhelming topic we're going to really break it down and make it super simple for you all we're asking is that you sign up. You can use this QR code. I also dropped the Google form in the chat just to kind of indicate. So we have your contact information of who wants to participate and what group you're thinking you might want to be in and know that that can change at any time once we get into this and just come on the 14th and we'll, we'll share more and make this very practical for you. Love it. Scott and Smith, thank you guys for jumping in and pouring into this group. One of the things I will kind of set the stage on the back end to this to make to challenge the group. You know, you all laugh, but I've said this before. In the last two years, the market has basically contracted by 40%. And the comment I've used, and I actually stole this from Warren Buffett, so it's not something of my own, is you will find out who is wearing a bathing suit when the tide recedes. Okay. And the challenge to it, and the reason why we're really revamping the budget mastermind is one, it's not sexy. Two, no one wants to be exposed when the tide recedes. But three is you have to be good stewards of your financial and fiscal responsibilities of the income you make. And a lot of people make really good incomes, and yet they're horribly at managing it. And so the whole goal of this is what you focus on expands from the standpoint of what you do and how you manage your, from an income standpoint and how you manage your expenses. And Smin and Scott are here to help you understand your financial position because we want to be able to help you grow your wealth. But you can't grow your wealth if you aren't managing your capital. So- Food for thought as you think to signing up for the mastermind on November 14th, all around the budget mastermind.
All right, last thing, I'll wrap it up for the group and uh, we'll leave you to be for the next two weeks is the holiday party. RSVPs are out now live. They came out last week, Thursday. The party is Thursday, December 5th. Doors open at 6 p.m. We will have the infamous casino tables, the dance floor that is always seems to be hot and rocking. And we have a side little Packer party with some fun little things to, to do to make it an incredibly exciting night for you and your guest. So please, uh, would love to see you there. Would also please ask that you RSVP. That RSVP did come out and we will be sending out additional emails. We already have 300 people that have registered for the party and we look forward to hosting you on Thursday, December 5th for the holiday party. Last thing, and I'm going to wrap it up here, is this. To whom much is given, much is expected. We are an incredibly productive group of people and we have built an incredible um, collective brand and reputation with each other. And with that, so many people have entrusted us as to how we help them buy and sell their largest financial asset. And for that, we're able to build an incredible life to create a legacy worth leaving. The United Way campaign is a collection of almost every single major corporation in southeastern Wisconsin collectively. And I believe the goal this year, and I could be wrong, is to raise north of $50 million for southeastern Wisconsin. And it's doing so with companies along the likes of Molson Coors, Northwestern Mutual, Baird, Harley Davidson, Keller Williams, Milwaukee. And our part in it is to raise $25,000. Between myself, my parents, and the organization, we've already committed 7000 already this morning, and we're incredibly excited to kick off the raffle items and the taco food truck challenge in order to help us achieve that, because to whom much is given, much is expected. So guys, thank you for jumping in. Thanks for listening and participating in the Budget Mastermind, and we appreciate, I will just say forward thinking, appreciate your willingness and participation in the United Way campaign. A reminder, no team meeting next week, Tuesday on the 5th, so that you are able to go vote, and we'll be back on Tuesday the 12th. Guys, have a great day. It's a beautiful day in Milwaukee. Thanks, guys.